Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I want to discuss the question that I don't know why, but almost every single person I interview misses here, especially those that are coming from the background of students. Those that typically get it are coming from the industry. But the question I ask is, what is the problem you had on this project? So this really ties into the video I had a few weeks ago, which I'll link here at the end of this video, um, on picking out a quant research topic for your masters here. And I've been really thinking about this because somebody asked here, so just to summarize a little bit, um, they wanted to basically know about, you know, how do you touch on overfitting? Because a lot of people claim to have some sort of amazing model. And of course it overfits and it won't really work in reality. And I don't know how to cope with that. And Dimitri, you don't talk a lot about overfitting. So this is kind of tied into this, but the question being, you know, what is that one problem or what is like the hardest problem you had on the project? Like I expect in the real world with real data, you're going to have all sorts of problems here. So like in time series modeling, for example, um, one of the biggest issues I have is getting all your variables to be stationary. And how did you deal with that? How did you, did you ignore variables? Did you try differencing? Did you try fractional differencing? Um, and a lot of times you do all these things that you're told to do in school, but they don't work on real world data a lot of times. So you have to get creative and come up with new solutions. And as someone who hires quants and someone who's you know been on both sides of this interviewing and hiring, I want to have a really deep, interesting quant conversation around modeling and frameworks and things that work and things that don't work. I want to see how you think. And when I'm being interviewed as well, I want people to ask me these questions because I get really excited when I talk about, you know, the models I've worked on or the research I've done or anything like that. So as a quant level here, why I ask that is because in the real world, you're not going to have like really easy solutions or really easy problems where, you know, in an interview like this interview, like this comment asked here with overfitting, I see people say, oh, Dimitri, you know, there was a model and it did well and I fit it and it was like 99.98% accuracy and they're all getting really jazzed about it. And in my head, there's like a bunch of red flags, you know, going off because <sighs> I've worked in this industry long enough. I know about where the accuracy levels sit for different ranges for different models. So if it's subprime versus prime versus auto versus credit card versus mortgage, right? And if I don't know, I can literally just, you know, I type out a message to a buddy of mine at some other bank or firm and I say, hey, you know, what are you guys getting on accuracy on this? I'm just looking for a ballpark. Um, we're trying this model in X, Y, and Z, and this is what's happening. But in an interview, I want you to discuss the problems you're having. I want to see that you know how to solve problems. You know how to identify problems. You know how to really wrestle with the problems. You know where to go to look for solutions. You know when to ask for help for these and realize the world's not perfect. And often you're not going to come up with a perfect model here. This sort of question, though, it really gets into that quantiness here. And I'm really, really, really disappointed when I interview students because I ask them this. Like I typically say, oh, it was the hardest part of, you know, your master's project, which was building a model to do X, Y, and Z. Like, I don't know, maybe estimate localized uh, volatility parameters or something. And so I'm, I'm looking for something interesting, something like you got stuck on and maybe you found a solution or maybe you got stuck on it and you didn't find a solution. And I think too many people get hung up on the fact of like, I want to seem really, really smart. And so, you know, I'm going to give a quick answer. And that always bugs me too. And people say like, you know, I ask the question, what is this hard problem and this hurdle you ran into? And then they like, they fire off immediately. And then the answer is so shallow that either A, I can't ask follow-up questions on it because it's like, oh, I just had a hard time finding the data. Or, you know, I got it to fit really great, but uh, I don't know. It, it seemed to be overfit, but then I did this one thing and then it was just done. Like there's no thought process behind that. So this is a sort of question I ask. Again, a lot of quant interviews ask brain teasers, I think are a massive waste of time. I'm not going to go into that. Uh, I don't sit either on the buy side, which is where you see a lot of these nonsensical uh, brain teasers at. But I really want to see, like pick your brain and learn things. And if it's a time series thing, for example, which is my area, I get really excited about it. And I'm like wanting to know your struggles and how you overcame them. Because I realize you're going to have these same issues and struggles with real world data. If you're a student or even a professional and you don't seem to understand or identify problems, like everything's magical and they just get worked out so well. Um, I know you're not really modeling things very well. Like you're just throwing models out there and then you don't look at all the assumptions. You don't look at like the issues of how they're being used and why it's not perfect and those sorts of things. And good quants really focus on math, stats, and computer science. And of course, we're going to run into all kinds of issues, even like on the implementation side, like you might have some sort of model and then you had an issue getting it implemented because, I don't know, data might not have been quite available that you thought was available, or maybe you had issues with like an IT team or an implementation team 
that didn't know how to code this uh, mathematically. And so you had to jump in and help them out, you know, I don't know, say like a Markov chain, putting it into matrix format for maximum you know, speed for calculations. Um, there's all kinds of interesting things you can talk about here. But you guys, really think about the projects you did. Really think about the things you struggled with. Really think about the things you learned. Because when you're, when you're in an interview, I want to ask that question and I want to have a meaningful interesting conversation. And I'm probably going to throw in like, oh, did you try this, that, or the other? I tried this before and it worked here, here, and here, but it didn't work over here. So anyways, prepare for the interviews. Uh, make sure you go through the projects. If you do research for your master's, think about these sorts of things when you're doing the research. Don't just find like an easy solution on like, I have data and I threw it through a model and it fits great. And then this was the answer because that's not meaningful research and that's not what we really do in the industry. So Anyways, those are my two cents. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.